Ann. Here. Stephanie. Here. Nate. Here. Travis. Here. Okay, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Consent agenda, any additions, corrections? Nope. Move to approve. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay, all those, well, we better call it. John, or Doug? Aye. John? Aye. Steph? Aye. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Now's the time for anybody that wishes to speak, can speak, if you're not on the agenda. Okay, moving on. Uh, Mr. Miller is not going to be able to be here tonight, correct? Correct. He'll try to make it on the 25th. Okay. B, approval of payment for invoices presented by Electric Pump. Um, after we had talked about this at the meeting when um, Travis told us that the estimated cost for that pump was going to be around 15, 12 to 15,000, um, invoices started coming in like crazy. And like I told you at the last meeting, I started to have a heart attack when they started to go over 25,000. So we've been going back and forth and back and forth with them. That's one of the reasons why John wanted to be here tonight to explain everything um, that's going on. But after we finally, um, we had like probably eight different service calls that they were charging us for with mileage. And Travis had understood it that if we get the new pump, then we weren't gonna be charged for all those service fees trying to fix it. So after going back and forth, they did get the invoice back down to 15,000, which was in the range that we had, um, they had quoted in the, in the beginning. So kind of, whoops, it's in here. So the total was going to be $15,969 and one cent. And that was all of it, like we didn't pay any before and this is what's left over, that was total? Yes. I hadn't paid any of the invoices because they had billed us for like, um, one of the invoices was for $6,230 and that was just all travel time and service calls. So, um, and then the pump itself was a little over 12000 closer to 13000 So they took off quite a bit of that. Then they gave us $873 in credit um, for another service call that they did. So yeah, the first invoice was 12529 plus 873 plus 6230 So out of all those invoices, they knocked it down, totaled it at 15969 one Okay, very good. Uh, we don't need to prove anything there, right? Um, Wait, we do. Payment yes. and invoices. I need a motion to accept that from electric pump. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Doug? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Travis? Aye. John? Aye. Nate? Aye. Okay. Approval of pay estimate number seven for municipal pipe in the amount of $80,666.83. I did receive this from B&K, but at this time I would like to um, receive a motion to table this to the next meeting. During this, this project, there was um, a few residents whose sewer lines got backed up due to errors that were made by municipal. Um, in the meantime, these have been fixed. The city um, paid for the, the problems that were caused to the residents and the repairs that had to be done, and we were supposed to be reimbursed by municipal. Uh, our engineer thought that we had received a check from them, and we have not, so um, I want to give a little more time before we pay them for them to consider paying us. So um, I'd like to take How much that. is ours? What was that? How much do they supposedly owe us? Um, it's probably around 5000 It was um, Eric Maher's home got backed up, and then there was a couple other spots where um, there was problems in the, they caused problems in the street, and or they didn't. Um, they made errors that should have been caught by the cameraing that they were supposed to have done prior to the project. So they were errors on their part that they need to, they need to correct before we move, move forward. And you just want to table it to the next meeting? Or? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion to table that to the next meeting. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, Stephanie? Aye. Doug? Aye. John? Aye. Nate? Aye. Travis? Aye. Okay. Public hearing and resolution. 
uh, discussion on proposed draft for fiscal year 20 and budget possible setting of a public hearing. I finally got through the, um, the budget with all the requests. Most of the requests um, weren't any problems. Um, I did send you guys a bunch of sheets in your packet. Hopefully you got a chance to look at them. Almost all of them were um, fine. Um, they balanced out revenues and expenditures. The only issues that I had were with the general fund and road use. Um, we'll start with road use if you want to go to fund number 110. We were quite a bit over um, in expenditures compared to revenues and like I told you guys last time, um, that was a fund that we did take our fourth employee's um, salary out of. Um, so Travis and I budgeted $100,000 for street maintenance for next year and I had to cut that down to $75,000 to get that fund to, to balance. So that leaves us with $65 to the good in that fund, taking that $25,000 out. So I did leave in there um, $15,000 for equipment, so I know Doug has uh, requested a um, Travis look into a couple pieces of equipment. Um, one was a um, brush to put on the, to help with the street sweeping, and the other one was a breaker um, that's used to break up concrete. So I could only put so much in that fund, so I was going to leave it to Travis and the maintenance guys to determine which ones were highest on their list and which ones they could get with the 15000 um, So that was it for that one. Um, hoping, since we had to take the 25000 out of there, that um, some of the things the guys can do in-house, which um, we'll be able to save that, that money there. Um, the other one was the general fund. Um, one of the th um, some of the things in the general fund that pushed us over um, we have increase in dispatch fees. We're still going back with the county. We've put in a request, uh, all four cities have put in a request to leave them as is, as they were this year. I don't know if they'll accept that request or um, what's going to happen there. So I did leave in um, the average amount of funds that we pay uh, Mount Vernon on our current agreement. So those are in there. What happens if we just tell them we ain't paying it? I don't know. We went through that before so i think mark was even at one of those meetings right? what aren't you gonna what do you, you say dispatch fees if we, i mean now it's something they want to double it what if uh, the four cities just say no we're not doubling it right now okay i just want to yeah, i think a, there's going to be quite a we few had an more. agreement before not all of a sudden we're double it or what are you going to do next year they're going to do it again next year and that was our point by putting that into the last agreement that it was only going to be for two years and we had to renegotiate and they just decided to do it without their rene renegotiating. So now we're in that renegotiating process. So it, it could be drawn out for the next six months too. So um, one thing I had to take out of there, we had put money in there to possibly do something with the West Wall and the History Center. I did remove that. Um, we just didn't have any funds in the budget. Hopefully once um, if that building is put on the list of the historical register, what, since we're going through that process, maybe we can apply for some type of grant with that. So um, I'll keep looking into that, and the historical preservation is going to look into that also. Um, ambulance, I met with the ambulance, um, went to their budget meeting. I did include the increase in the per capita um, that they had asked for. It went from $3 to $4. Um, the other thing that we talked about was instead of giving them the full amount that they're asking to help purchase the ambulance, um, if we put in half this year and then budget for half next year. So I, I did put in the increase in the per capita and I put in half of what they requested for um, our, our Did portion they tell us some reason why they don't apply for grants? Um, there is no grants available that they, they had right now, but they are in the process right now of applying for their 501 oh, RECI. That's one three, reason. Three mm -hmm. yeah. um, so they're hoping to, that, that sometimes can take a year before, or even more before you get that. But so they're in the process of doing that. I went, in, I went to their meeting um, to find out um, just what's going on and uh, the, the situation we don't want to be in is, you know, spend all this money, get a new ambulance, and then find out two or three years down the line that they're not bringing enough revenues to keep going. And I'm sure everybody feels the same way I do. I mean, it's a service that we really, really need and we, we really want in this community. And it's one of the reasons why people move to this area, because we have our own ambulance. But they are making progress. It kind of reminds me of Southeast Lynn. Once we got the 
new board members going and a new director. They're moving in the right direction right now. They really want to work with the fire departments and try to share um, different things if they can. So I think they're moving in the right direction. We just got to keep, um, uh, I guess, help them out like we did Southeast Lynn, but you know, to a certain extent. Um, and hopefully all the information he presented to you guys last time helped you understand that a little bit more. Do you know if Mount Vernon's doing the same strategy with regard to the request um, of, I, of I, half and half? Yeah, I talked to Chris. I met with Chris actually, and, and a couple of the ideas we came up with is either doing it this way or the other thing was like each year just keep increasing the per capita. But um, so it just kind of depends on which way you want to go. This This would be an easy... You know, one time here, one time there, and then we'd be done until they, you know, situation comes. And I did explain to them that hopefully, you know, this is a one-time thing and you guys can get it going where um, when you need a new one in five, ten years, the funds will be available. So I talked to them about, you know, starting a capital equipment fund and they're hoping to do that. It's just right now they don't have the funds to put it in there. But once they get the 5013C, they're hoping to get a little more donations and go from there. They're going to do some more fundraisers, but... We all know fundraisers sometimes can be a thousand here or there, but not the, the big dollars. But. So Mount Vernon was going to do one or the other. Last time I talked to Chris, they were kind of waiting to see what we wanted to do. So how much are we giving them? Uh, it would be twenty-five this year. Twenty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which would be the increase in the per capita, which went from sixty-five hundred to like eighty-seven, and then the rest of it would be toward the purchase of a. A, a new ambulance. And their share of the ambulance was, Mount Vernon's share was greater than ours. It's going to be around 200000 so the ambulance themselves are going to pay 100000 and then... Lisbon oh, and then 50-50 Lisbon, Mount Vernon? And then no. we would split the other 100000 but our it goes according to per capita. Yeah, so but Mount we're like 30% yeah. there. We're like 16 5 a year or something yeah. like that, yeah. right? So ours is like around 35, 30, 32, 35, 32, and Mount okay. Vernon's would be like 65. Okay. So... But our, our numbers have increased since, especially since the Lisbon Rehab Center. And we have Myers Meadow too, so. Do they ask Cornell for anything or does Mount Vernon ask Cornell for anything or? As far as the ambulance? Anybody or? ask Cornell for anything? I don't know. Good question. I was just well, curious, I mean. Oh, good question. I mean, I know yeah. they pay a lot of taxes, Cornell does. Doug, did they talk about Cornell when we was there? I didn't think so. So those are the changes that um, are there. Um, I know we had talked a little bit last time about the agreement with Mount Vernon. I sent everybody a copy of that agreement um, via email. Hopefully you guys all got it. Um, I also put in there a report that Amy had done um, that showed the call volume and you know how many calls are handled by Lisbon, how many are handled by Mount Vernon. And then I also gave you guys each a copy of the, the last schedule that was submitted to me just so you get an idea of what our um, Ricky schedule, well, the coverage that Ricky schedules for, for the Lisbon officers. I guess I would like to have that schedule before the end of the month. I mean, I'd like to be looking at February schedule instead of January schedule. I mean, I don't really nothing we can do about or say anything about what they've already done. What I did, that, the purpose of that was just to give you an idea of what they, how they are. Is that typical? I mean, is it normally as you see it like this? Um, well, Ricky's not very good at getting the schedules to me. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> but that's their normal schedule. What they've been doing for the last um, probably six to eight months is working. Um, Ricky works five days, um, and the other officers work four, four ten-hour days. But putting out the schedule for this month currently mm -hmm. would be a problem because if it goes to all the council and it's public knowledge, and you wouldn't want that out to the general public to know when there's an officer on, when there's not. Yeah, I, well, I said, but doesn't he keep his schedule on a whiteboard in his office? Yeah, they have a board upstairs. And you can see it right up from the lobby down he, here. He usually gives a copy to me or, um, and Christina just so we know if if it's on or not yet. Sure. But you're right, John. I, that's that probably not something to publicize, but no. No, we don't. I don't know, but I I just would be curious as to why we have coverage, a lot of coverage on a Wednesday, 
but only one officer on on a Saturday. And that would be that would be a discussion you'd have, we'd have to have with Ricky. Maybe next meeting you can. And I would be curious to know how many of our calls that Mount Vernon's covering would fall on those days when we don't have a lot of coverage. Like what percentage of those would be on like a Saturday versus a weekday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why Amy did that report so you could get an idea of when they're coming in, but. So like I said, it's just information I wanted you guys to have before you um, consider continuing the agreement as is or changing it. And how many hours do we have for Mount Vernon? 20 a month? Uh, yeah. So that would be what, four hours a week? Is there a way to get that on this chart? Um, I'm just curious. Don't yeah. do it. I just wonder if where are we asking them to cover or are we, are we even picking at all? Are they? They're pretty much picking. Mount Vernon picks when? when? When they know we don't have anybody on, then they send somebody okay, over. Okay, so they, they are they, coordinating against. That, yeah. Like if there's a 10 or 12 hour period, they can send anybody over any time during that period. Yeah. Well, in the olden days when we lived by the school, I can guarantee you that Mount Vernon's here at night. You know, um, yeah, they're they there at night. Quite a bit. Yeah. So when Mount Vernon sends an officer over here, is that officer on duty in Mount Vernon also? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if they spent a lot of time over here on Saturdays and Sundays. Right? Yeah, it looks like they need to. Who comes in and shuts the bar down on Saturday, Doug? Hell, if I know, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> so after making those changes, like I said, we can still change them in any way. Um, the only thing that did go up with our budget this time was debt service, and that's because we do have the new um, sewer loan. So we have payments that are going to start coming out next year out of that um, sewer bond. So our overall um, property tax will be 11.829. Last year it was 11.440, so it's a, it'll be a 39 cent increase. So. Uh, person who has a $100,000 home would pay $39 more next year. So it, it went up a little bit, but um, in the last <coughs> four years, taxes have went down to $2.50. So it's still, we're still way below we were in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. 2015. You or me. So we start paying back that loan next year, Connie, on next year's like next year. Um, we'll pay interest this year and then next year we'll make a. How much is that loan? How many years was that loan? 20. Mm. But we have one loan that the city took in, what year did I say, bro? 2004? Yeah. There was one um, sewer loan that was taken out in 2004 for $958,000 and I've managed to pay that one off early and we make the last principal payment June 1st. So the purpose in doing that was to get rid of one before we start a new one. And I'm working with the financial advisor right now because um, I want to pay off the splash pad and um, the fire truck loan one year early, the splash pad three years early. So both of those would be paid off in 2023. And when we go to do this new water um, project, I'm assuming our first payment would be around 2023, so again, remove one before we put on another one. So that's the goal. It looks like it's going to work, so. Okay, dokie. Anything else? Um, that's all I have. Now we need to set up public hearing? Yes. So I can get it in the paper tomorrow. Nathan's holding the spot for me. February 25th. It will be on, uh, let's see, what month? March? That's last year. I'll make a motion that we set the public hearing for February 25th. 25th? Yep. Set public hearing for February 25th. I'll second. We have that in a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Fire department, we'd like to hear from you.
give the tool. Uh, of your budget? No, no, no. Oh, the grant. I think it said 29.16 or something, didn't it? It was. 29.36. 29.36. All right, so uh, we applied for the uh, wildland forestry grant uh, through the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, uh, like we talked about before. Um, we were um, accepted this time. We applied last year and we were denied, but this year we got it. Um, total federal assistance is 29.76. It's a matching grant. Um, so you guys have this, is that right? Yep. You can see uh -huh. all the equipment that we applied for. So we can get all that stuff that's listed in there. Uh, I think we have until July uh, to get that taken care of. Good job for you. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. We'll try for the AFG when it comes open. We keep looking around. Brett's been real good. Brian Hall's been good. County's been helping. So anything helps, I guess. Very good. Yeah. It's good when those departments apply for those. Um, Dave and Travis is out plowing. Um, Dave didn't want, didn't, I told him he didn't need to make the trip since the weather was bad. Um, and let's see, Ricky um, gave the report. It should be in front of you. And I don't have anything other than I'm knee deep in the budget. Need even something else too. Along with yeah. the snow. <laughs> Do you have anything else for the fire department? No. Okay. Mayor's report. I don't have anything. Council report. Travis. Nothing. Nate. Um, nothing. Just other other than. I'll well, just be careful out there. And thanks to the city for to the city employees who get all that snow out of our way. Okay, Stephanie. Um, well, state wrestling's coming up this week, so I'd like to say good luck to the boys that are headed down to Des Moines. Um, that, that's always a fun time for them, so good luck to them and hope everybody's safe down there. Other than that, just bear with us on the snow. John? I think this is the third or fourth Tuesday that the school closes, therefore Southeast Lynn closes, therefore there's no food distribution, but anybody needing food can still contact Southeast Lynn when they are open and find a time you can get together with them and get your food that you need. That's all I have. Dad? Any more business? Meeting adjourned. Get the check signed.